Okay, so real quick, uh, I want to look at the next section, not a big deal, it has to do with uh, angle relationships. We're just going to look at a couple of angle relationships that occur when lines intersect. Okay, so we, we learned that the other day we talked about angles as being adjacent if they share a common vertex on the side, right? So here's an example. So these, would you agree that... Somebody tell me, list two adjacent angles for me, please. Adjacent angle. So angle A, D, B, and angle B, D, C are adjacent. How come? Good, because they share the same vertex and they share a side, right? They share a side. Okay, good. Uh, so we're good with that. They have no common interior points, but they share they share a common side. We're gonna look at some other relationships. Okay, vertical angles. Do you remember what vertical angles are from years past? They just look like a line. Kind of. They they. They're angles formed by two pairs of opposite rays. An easier way to think about it, I think, is just to think about if you have two lines that intersect, then they form two pairs of vertical angles. So the opposite angles in that intersection are considered to be vertical angles, right? So if I label these angles, let's call this one angle one, that one angle two, angle three, and angle four. Uh, what's, give me one pair, okay, what's one pair of vertical angles then? Angles four. Two and four. Another one would be one, one and three. three. Okay. And how would we show congruence there? What's the symbol? Okay, good. That well for an angle it's that little loop, right? So we get that would mean those two are congruent. How would I say these two are congruent? Two two good. Okay, so I need maybe to do something like this where I've got two loops and two loops now, right? Two goes with two, one goes with one. Okay? So those are congruent. What can you tell me about the measures of angles one and three? They have of one and three. Uh oh, they're equal. Good. The measures are equal. The angles are congruent, but their measures are equal. Good. Okay. Questions on that terminology? Okay. So same picture we just drew. So one and three are vertical angles. Two and four are vertical angles. Okay. Uh, what about a linear pair? Do you remember what that means? If I look at this example over here again, can anybody tell me an example of two angles that form a linear pair? Just see if you remember. One and two. How come? You're right. Okay, because okay, because together they form a 180 degree angle, right? Okay, so it, essentially what it is is the opposite. The, the, the non-shared sides form a line. Does that make sense? So the, the, you know, this side, the shared side of angles one and two is this guy, isn't it? That's the shared side. The non-shared sides would be that side and that side, and together they form a line. So that's a linear pair, right? Okay, so five and six, for example, are a linear pair. Okay? What can you tell me about the relationship between the measures of angles five and six then? Oh. They add up to 180. Yeah, they add up to 180, don't they? Okay. We've got some words for that. Uh, okay, are two and three a linear pair? No. No, not right, because they don't form a line. Uh, what about one and two? Yes. Yes. What about one and four? Mm. No. Okay, good. You got it. Are, okay, are one and three vertical angles? No. No? Mm -hmm. Are there any vertical angles up there? No. Nope. Good. Okay. Try this. 
So the stair railing is shown if angle 6 has a measure of 130, what is going to be the measure of angle 8, Katie? What do you think? 130. 130. What's going to be the measure of angle 5, Cassie? 130. What do you think? 6 is 130. What do those two have to add up to? 180. Oh, okay. So what's 5 then? If six is is thirty is one thirty. Fifty. Fifty. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Seven. Seven would be. Yeah. I mean, we could find all of them. We could. Okay. Uh, we got it. <laughs> I think we got this one down. Let's get through that. Uh, okay. So what about what about this? This is more along the lines of what I want you to start. But we're gonna do a couple like this. Okay, so this is a good example because we've got to use an albeit simple geometry relationship, not a big, not complicated from the geometry perspective, but we've got to use the geometry relationship to set up an equation or maybe even a system of equations that allow us to solve for those variables, right? Question? Okay. No. Okay, so now let me ask you some general, but let's just stare at this for a second before we jump into this. I want you to notice a couple things about this. How many variables are represented up there? Two, 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 two. right? Because I got X's and Y's, two different kinds, right? Yeah. X's and Y's. Okay, so algebraically speaking, how many different equations would I need at the minimum to solve for both of those variables then? No, got to have at least two. And this is a rule, you may not have talked about this in algebra, but this is something I'm going to bring up again and again. This is one of the fundamental rules of algebra is you need at least as many unique equations as you have variables in a system, right? So remember back to what we did at the beginning of the year. Whenever we solved for x and y, we always had how many equations? Two, right? We had a system of two equations. If I had variables w, x, y, and z, which we'll do next year in algebra two, we'll solve some linear systems like that, how many equations would I require? At least four. And the thing about it is, those four have to be different equations. Like, for example, I just wanted to show you one thing here. If I have, for example, the equation 2x plus 3y equals 4, and I have the equation negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 8, is that sufficient to solve that system? People are shaking their heads. I got two equations. Well, let's just see. Let's see. What would I have to do to solve this system? We've done a lot of this stuff. Okay, I, I could multiply the top one by two, maybe, right? You, you're right. If I multiply the top one by two and the bottom one I leave alone, I'm going to get 4x plus 6y equals 8. And the bottom one is going to be negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 8. When I add them up, what happens? Cancels. Everything cancels. I get 0 equals 0. What's that mean? I got an infinite number of solutions, so that was not enough for us to pin it down to a single solution, was it? We, we talked about that. We did examples like this, but maybe now, based on the conversation we just started having, how come that happened? Um, not exactly congruent, but there's something going on with it. What if I graph these lines? What would you notice? They're the same line, right? These are essentially the same equation, aren't they? They're not, if, if I multiply both sides of the, of the top by negative 2, I would get the bottom equation, right? Does that make sense? So does that count as different equations? No, it doesn't. It doesn't count. When we're talking about lines, for example, we can only pin down a single solution if we have two different lines, right? The same thing is going to be true next year when we talk about linear systems involving four variables. I've got to have four unique equations, none of which can be represented as the same equation to be able to solve the system. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm looking ahead. For you guys, I want to do this a lot. I want to look ahead so you can kind of just see where you're going with this math. Okay, so back to business here. So we've got two different variables. We're going to need at least two equations. 
right? So there's a couple ways we can do this. Katie's got an idea. What do you think? Um, 3x plus 5 plus x plus 15 equals 180. Okay, good. Now, now I want you to notice what she did. There's two ways we can go about doing this. I'm going to grab this screenshot of this, and I want to be able to do some writing. So... Okay, so she chose, I'm going to kind of color code this a little bit. She chose to add up those two measures, and, and she saw that they, they were what? Angles E and, or angle AED and angle DEB, or have what kind of relationship? Okay, see it again, a linear, what's pair. Linear pair. So they add up to 180, right? Okay, that's good. So she said 3x plus 5 plus x plus 15 equals 180. Okay, we can solve that, right? Uh, if I combine like terms, what do I get? 4x plus Okay, keep going. 4x equals 160. If I subtract 20 from both sides, 4x equals 160, so x equals 40. Okay, we're halfway there. What would the other, the other equation look like? Okay. Maisie, what did you get for the other one? Um, y plus 20 plus 4y equals 15 plus 180. Equals 180. Good. So if I combine like terms, what do I get? 5y plus 5. Plus five. Subtract 5. We got it, right? That was a smart way to do it. Could have done it differently. Could have done it this way, maybe. What if I chose, let's say, these two angles? What am I going to get? Okay, I'm going to write the x's first, but same thing. 3x plus 5 plus y plus 20 equals 180. And if I took those, I'd get x plus 15 plus 4y minus 15 equals 180, right? That's maybe not quite as good a way to do it. It's going to work, but what's the problem? I have two variables in each equation. It's still going to work, right? This ends up being, if I simplify this a little bit, it ought to look pretty familiar. What do I get here? If I combine like terms, I get 25 on this side, and I can subtract it away. Would you agree I just end up with 3x, this was be an arrow, 3x plus y equals, what, 155? And down here, I'm going to get, what, x plus 4y equals 180? Yeah. So I can solve that. I mean, we, we did a ton of stuff like that earlier in the year, right? It's a linear system. But it's maybe not quite as good an approach because I've mixed my variables, right? This may seem like a pretty simple thing, but later on, uh, you guys are hoping are all going to go do big things in math. And later on, you're going to be doing classes in college, if you continue with math or physics or engineering, called differential equations and partial differential equations. And the same kind of thinking on a much more complicated level pops up. You want to always try to separate variables in your systems if you can. That's, I mean, Katie intuitively did that. It was a smart way to do it. Okay, so good. Okay, good. All right, so here's what we did. Good. You can, you can go back and look at this later if you want to. Okay, so then what if we wanted to find, like, the measure of angle AED, what could we do? Yeah, good. We could just plug in that value of X and end up coming up with that angle measure, right? Okay, no big. Okay? All right. Okay, some more vocabulary. We have some special words for, like, for example, for a linear pair, we've got another word that describes that and a, and a, and a, a word that goes along with it that describes angles that are slightly different. 
Complementary angles, you might remember this, complementary angles are angles that add up to a measure of what? 90. Okay, so here's an example of complementary angles. We can see that because they form a right angle, right? Do the angles have to be adjacent like that, though, to be complementary? No, they don't. Those angles could still be complementary if their angle, if their measures add up to 90, right? They don't have to be adjacent, okay? If they add up to 180, we call them supplementary. How do you keep those straight? Well, you probably don't need any mnemonic device for that, but here's how I do it. What comes first, C or S? C. C. What comes first, 90 or 180? Yeah, so C goes with 90, S goes with 180. Complementary adds to 90, supplementary adds to 180. Okay? They can be adjacent or they can be non adjacent. Same thing. Okay? Try an example of a. Oh. Okay. Are those angles complementary, complementary, supplementary, or neither? Take a second. Don't say it out loud. What do you think? Neither. 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 Okay, so if A is the complement of C, if A has a measure of 47, what's C? Duncan, what's C going to be? The measure of angle C. They're complementary angles. We'd say A is a, is a complement of C if it's complementary with C. So what do they have to add up to if they're complementary? 90. 90, yeah. So what's the measure of angle C going to be? Almost. Sorry. Almost. 43. 43. Good. Good. <laughs> okay. So 90 minus 47. Okay. If P is a supplement of R, R has a measure of 36. Really, what's going to be the measure of angle P? So if <laughs> R has a measure of 36, P is a supplement of R, what's the measure of P? What do they have to add up to? Yeah. So what are we going to get? Yeah, good one, 44, right? Okay, good. Okay, how about this one? A little tougher. Angle W and angle Z are complementary. The measure of angle Z is five times the measure of angle W. I want you to find the measure of angle W. Take a second, see if you can come up with a way of doing that. good problem because it's forcing you to have a story problem type thing, right? You got to take this situation and your job is you want to convert this into an algebra equation that you can solve using algebra. You shift into algebra mode because you're good at algebra. Is here. Raise your hand if you got an answer. Okay. Megan, what'd you get? 15. Okay, now let's talk about, everybody get 15 and got an answer? Okay. No? Okay, some yes, some no. Let's talk about how, how we can do this though. What might we do in a situation like this? How do we approach a story problem like this? We want to turn it into an algebra expression. Is that a hand? Okay. Okay, good. Let me make a note of that. Good. So this means add to 90 degrees. Good. So that's helpful. And you know, 5 times 20 to 100 seems to be what? Okay. Okay. And so you know you're going to be a little less than that. Could we, did anybody involve maybe a variable in this? An unknown. Um, I put that um, angle Z would be 5x and W oh, okay. would be Okay, so what's x? So, w, so the measure of angle W is x. Okay, that's a great idea. 
That's a great idea. Now, here, here's why. They want us, first of all, they want us to find the measure of angle W. And typically, the thing that you're looking for, we want to set up maybe as a variable, right? Uh, this is an important statement. If the measure of angle Z is five times the measure of angle W, then we'd like to set up the measure of angle W as being an unknown, right? That, we're going we're gonna to set that up as x. So, and I'd like you to write this down. This is a good thing to do. So x equals the measure of angle w. If that's true, how do I say that statement then? What is 5 times the measure of angle w if x represents the measure of angle w? 5x, right? So all of this stuff just becomes a 5x. And so I know that the, that the sum of those has to be 90. So I end up with 5x plus x equals 90. Now it's easy, right? Now we've turned this into an algebra problem, and it's an easy algebra problem. We can shift into algebra mode, get an answer, and then shift back to geometry mode and interpret it, right? So what do we do to solve this? Real simple. Combine like terms. So 6x equals 90, divide by 6, and x equals 15, right? So now they want to know what's the measure of angle w? Well, it's x. What if they ask instead, what's the measure of angle z? I'd plug it into 5x then, right? And you get that? Does that make sense? Not a hard problem, but, I, but the process is what I really wanted you to latch on to there. Okay? Okay. So, how much time we got? Not much, probably, right? Five minutes? Okay. Is that right? Five minutes. Oh, we have 20 minutes. Yeah, we do. Okay. Why don't why don't we go to the lab? Let's go to we gotta hustle down and get going. Okay, let's go 209.